Um, can I ask you guys to, or if there's any questions from worksheet four, I think we talked about worksheet three yesterday to, before we started, right? Yeah. Okay, so let's just worry about questions from worksheet four. Does anybody have anything from worksheet four that you'd like to talk about before we start in on things today? Going once, going twice. Okay. On to our next topic. So today we're going to talk some about properties for logarithms. So there are three very important properties that we're going to be using today to do some examples of problems. And then again, once we start solving, these will come back and be important again. The first one is called the product property. And what this says is that if I have the logarithm of a product of two things, I can rewrite this as the sum of two logarithms. The next one is called the quotient property. So if I have the logarithm of a fraction or the logarithm of a division problem, I can rewrite that as the difference of two logarithms. And the third property is called the power property. So if I have the logarithm of an exponential, I can rewrite that as a factor of the base of the, or the logarithm of the base. So the exponent becomes a coefficient outside of the logarithm. And I guess we'll do a couple of bonus properties. Um, so let's call this one the identity property. And that just says that log base b of b is 1. That's kind of a natural consequence of what we talked about yesterday, right? And the fifth one, um, I don't know why I spoke that wrong. I'll call this the zero property for logarithms. And what it says is that log base b of 1 is 0. OK. So. The three major ones, though, that we're going to be using to do our problems are really going to be these three, the product, quotient, and power properties. Okay. So there's two types of problems that we're going to talk about. So we're going to talk about expanding. And the idea here is we're going to take one, a single logarithm, and turn it into the sum or difference of many logarithms.
maybe the The other type of problem we're going to talk about is condensing or compressing, where we're going to take the summer difference of many logs and write them as a single logarithm. So they're just kind of opposite processes, right? So the order in which we're going to use the properties of logarithms that we described at the beginning, when expanding, is we're going to do quotient, product, and then power. And when we're condensing or compressing, I can't remember the, ver the verbiage that I tend to use most. I probably use the two interchangeably. We're just going to go in the reverse order. So we would go power, and then product, and then quotient. Everybody OK with that idea? So remembering these two orders is really important to make sure you're doing things in the correct order. You can always do things out of order, but you have to be very careful about how you're representing things algebraically. It's typically much, much easier to just use the order that I've described here, and things are kind of obvious on what to do. Much in the same way if you have 2x plus 5 equals 7. You could divide by 2 first, but it just kind of makes everything a little less convenient, and you have to remember to like turn everything into a fraction and like you have a bunch of nonsense to take care of. It's much easier to subtract the 5 first and then divide by 2. Same kind of idea here. So let's just do a couple of examples. Yes? All right. So let's say we have log base 3 of um, 5xy squared. And here this is an expanding problem. Okay. So the first thing when we're doing expanding is we look for quotient properties to use. So when we're expanding, I'm going to be looking for things that look like the left-hand side, and when we're condensing, I'm going to be looking for things that look like the right-hand side. So for expanding and looking for a quotient property, what I'm looking for is something that looks like this going on in my logarithm. So let's go down and look at our problem. Do I see anything that looks like that? Yes. Is there a, is there a fraction? Right. So there's no fraction going on. There's no division going on. So there's no quotient property to do. Mm -hmm. So I'm done with that. So we'll move next to looking for product property. So that's the second thing I look for when expanding. Do we see any product property going on here? Yes. How many products, how many multiplication symbols are going on? There's two. There's one between the 5 and the x, and another between the x and the y squared. So if I apply the product property, what that's going to do is it's going to allow me to write each one of these things that are being multiplied as their own separate logarithm with addition symbols in between. Are we all okay there? Okay. So you see that I kind of used the product property twice when I did that, right? Since I had two multiplication symbols, like I had to do it twice, right? Is that obvious then? Yeah. Okay. All right. 
Now we're done with the multiplication, right? The product properties have all been done. The next thing we'll do is look for power properties. How many power properties do you see? So I see one as well. Where is it happening? The y squared. Very good. So I'm going to just recopy the first two logarithms since there's no power properties going on there. Nothing changed. What am I going to write when I apply the power property to log base 3 of y squared? Okay, so I'm going to move the exponent to a coefficient, so I'll have 2 times, and then I'll write log base 3 of 1. So the power property just moves the exponent inside the logarithm into a coefficient outside the logarithm. And then we'd be done. That's not so bad, right? That's the end of this problem. Let's do another. So there's no solving here. All we're doing is working on like rearranging these into an equivalent form. So this is kind of like a simplification problem. Okay. What if we do log base 5 of 7x squared over y cubed? So we do the quotient property first. Great. How would I rewrite this using the quotient property? So log 5 of the, very good, of the entire numerator minus, yes. That's y cubed though, right? You just probably couldn't read it from way back there. Yep. Good. So it's basically logarithm of the numerator minus logarithm of the denominator is how we're applying that. Very good. And that's all the quotient properties going on here, right? So now we go product property. How many product properties do you see? Just one. Where is it happening? The 7x squared. Very good. So how would I rewrite 7x squared using the product property? Good. Don't forget the base fives, though. Everybody happy to hear? And then what do I look for next? Power property. How many power properties do we see? Two. Two? Which ones are they happening on? Very good. So how would I rewrite those two logarithms? Two times log base 5 of x, and then we have minus 3, yeah, log base 5 of y. Good. And then we're done. Is everybody okay here? All right. Yep, that problem is finished. So once we can't do, there's no more properties to do, we're finished, right? So you do all the quotients, then you do all the products, and then you do all the powers, and it should be done unless there's like a weird set of parentheses going on that's telling you to like do this stuff first and then do that. All right, you ready for the tricky one? This is the one that always screws students up. Okay. 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 No, we can do this together. What should we do first? We're expanding still. Yep, this is still example three under expanding. Good. So what would I rewrite this as using the quotient property? So the natural log 10x squared minus natural log y cubed z to the fourth. Okay, so didn't seem, doesn't seem too hard there. Next up is which property? 
product. How many product properties do we see? I see two, right? There's one multiplication symbol here and one multiplication symbol there. Okay, so tell me what to write here. Log 10 plus log x squared minus log y squared plus log equals. How many agree with this? One person, that's it? Two? I agree. You agree? Everyone agrees with this as the correct step? Yeah. This is actually incorrect. Okay. Yeah, and and this is I agree with the disagreement. And this is this is why this is the trickiest one. So here is the here's what's tricky about it. This logarithm is negative, correct? Yeah. Because there's a negative sign in front of it. So really, when we apply the product property, there's a negative sign around the entire result. So we need to make sure that we're distributing the negative through. So what we really would want to write here is log 10 plus log x squared minus log y cubed minus log z to the fourth. The alternative way to think about it, which I think is sometimes easier, is thinking in the beginning that there's two quotient properties going on because you have two factors in your denominator. So you could write from the beginning, go and write it as like log 10x squared minus log y cubed minus log z to the fourth and write it think about two quotient properties in the beginning rather than one quotient and then two pop products. That I think is a little bit easier for me, but you can do it either way, you're doing the same thing. The downside of doing it this way is you have to remember to distribute that negative, which is easy to forget to do. It's the number one mistake students make when doing these kinds of problems. Okay, so we have one more property still that we haven't done yet. We have power properties to do. How many powers do we see? Three. And so we apply that power property to each of those three logarithms. So we move the exponent to the coefficient, and now we're done. What do you guys think? Not bad, right? Let's go the other direction. Let's do some condensing problems. Okay, so remember, for condensing, what direction do we go with our properties? We go power, product, quotient, the opposite order. And remember, when we're looking for our properties to use, we're looking at the right-hand side of the property. So for a power property, we're looking for coefficients. For a product property, we're looking for additions. And for a quotient property, we're looking for subtraction. So it's the opposite end of the property also that we need to look at. All right. So when I look at this problem, do we see any power properties? Yes. Where is it at? The second one, because I have a coefficient out front, right? Okay, so if I apply the power property, that coefficient is going to move inside the logarithm to the exponent. Everybody's okay there? Okay, we've done all the power properties. Next thing we look for is product properties. Do we see any product property? Yes, why? Because of the addition, exactly right. 
So if we apply the power property, we move those two together inside of one logarithm with multiplication in between them. And then the last thing we would check for is quotient property, but since there's no subtraction, clearly that's not the case and we're done. Everybody's okay there? Okay. First things first, where do we start? Power. power property. Okay, how many power properties do you guys see? Two. Where are they? Very good, with the coefficients, so 5 log 2y and 8 log 2z both have power properties. So if we apply that, the coefficients move to the exponent inside the logarithm. Next thing we look for is product property, the other P1. How many product properties do we see? I see three addition symbols. What's the problem though? The four isn't a logarithm, right? Is it possible to rewrite four as a logarithm? Sure it is. So we know four is equal to four to the first, right? Um, but really I wanna rewrite four as a base two number because I want the base of my exponential to match the base for my logarithm. So really I'm gonna think about four as two squared. If I use my proper or my definition of a logarithm, I know that this is the same thing as saying that, um, oh no, this isn't. Log two of four is equal to two. That's not what I wanted here. Well, it'll be okay. So we have this, right? And if I multiply both sides by 2, I get 4. So I can replace my 4 with 2 times log base 2 of 4. You see that little sneakiness that we just pulled there? It was quite sneaky. Maybe addressing that four would have been wiser to do right from the get-go, right? Because notice what we picked up when we did this was what? Yeah, another power property. So let's do that real quick. A power property? because of the coefficient of two. And notice that instead of writing four squared, I just wrote 16. Is everybody okay there? Okay. Now we can do our product property exactly as expected. There's three addition symbols. So there's three product properties. So all I need to do is just stick all of the insides together. Oops, that Z is an eight. Exponent has an eight on it. With multiplication in between them. And there's no subtraction, so there was no quotient property, right? Everybody's okay there? Okay. 
So if you have just a number there, you know what? I don't know why I did this so like such the hardest way here. This is the easier way to do it. Is I'm just going to take four and rewrite it as log base two of two to the fourth. That's the easier way to think about it. I'm just going to make the exponent base match the logarithm and put whatever the number is that I need to deal with as the exponent. I don't know why I went such a roundabout way through that. Although what we did was correct, it's just not expedient. Oh. You know, like it's much easier to just be like, oh, I'll just do log base b of b and use whatever the number is as the exponent on my b, right? So like the 4 is here. I used the base is just matched. That's much easier. My apologies for just not being, not doing it the easiest way possible, right? All right. Uh, let's do one more, and we'll kind of be done here for today, and then give you guys some time to work on some practice here. Sound good? All right. So this will be another um, kind of tricky one. Obviously, in the homework, they won't all be the tricky ones, but I like to show you the tricky ones um, in the notes so that you're not, like, corn-fused too badly when it comes homework time. All right, first up is... Which property? No power. Power no properties. Power. Yeah, they all have power property. So there's four power properties to do. Everybody's okay there? Okay, what happens next? What do we do next? We do products next. How many product properties do you see? Two. So you said one. Why do you say one? There's one addition symbol. Michael, you said two. Why did you say two? Okay. What if I told you there really is two product properties hiding here? So we see the one really clearly here. Where is the second product property Mr. Coolit claims is going on here? It is hiding in between the log Z and the log W. Notice that both of these are negative. So if I factor a negative sign out, I have another product property hiding in there, right? You see this now? This is the exact same situation that we saw in the example C on expanding, where we had to distribute the negative. But since we're going in the reverse direction, we had to factor out the negative. So when we see two subtraction symbols or more, we know that there's product properties hiding inside of that subtraction, okay? So just kind of keep your eye out for that. So now we'll do our two product properties. And now we'll do our one quotient here at the end. Okay with that? Cool. Let's stop here. Feels like.